Welcome to Math with Professor V. In this video, we're going to learn about indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. So before we start our discussion, let's do a recap so far of how we've evaluated limits up to this point in our calculus career. So the first thing that you learned to do was direct substitution, meaning you're trying to find the limit as x approaches some number and you just straight up plug it into the function. For example, if you have the limit as x approaches two of x squared plus one over x minus three, you try to directly substitute it or plug it in for x, two for x, this would be two squared plus one over two minus three. What do we have up top? Four plus one, that's five over negative one, so negative five. So as long as you just get a number, even if it's zero, you're done. That's the most relaxing case. That doesn't happen too often. <laughs> okay, second scenario that you should have studied so far, you do direct sub or you try to plug in and instead you get some non-zero number in the numerator, and then you have zero in the denominator. This is going to yield an infinite limit, either positive infinity, negative infinity, or it may not exist depending on how much information you're given. If you feel a little rusty on this one, you are not alone. I have a whole video dedicated to this topic, and I'll link it here and in the description, and it's short. so. I would watch it if I were you, if you don't feel good about those. Then another scenario that's popped up is an indeterminate form of the type zero over zero. And indeterminate doesn't mean that the limit doesn't exist necessarily. It means when it's in this form, we can't determine what the limit is. We don't know if it's going to positive infinity. We don't know if it's going to negative infinity. It could possibly go to zero, one, four sevenths, I don't know, I can't determine, it's indeterminate. And up till now, anytime you've had this kind of indeterminate form, you've done pretty much one of three things. You've tried to factor and then simplify so that you could evaluate the limit. You've tried multiplying by the conjugate in the numerator and denominator and then clean up or whatever. And we also can use the squeeze theorem on limits of this kind on occasion, okay? Good, another kind of indeterminate form that you should have encountered so far is you have a rational expression, and this time you have x approaching infinity, not some number, and you'll get an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. And in this particular case, what we do is we divide everything in that expression by the highest degree of the denominator. Okay, and like I said, if you need a recap, if you want like more in-depth examples and lectures, I have plenty of videos. I'll link them all in the description. You may have run into a couple other indeterminate forms like infinity minus infinity, and we'll talk about those. And again, multiplying by the conjugate usually works in that scenario. And what we're going to do now is build on our skill set or our approach to evaluating limits because many limits that we're going to look at cannot be evaluated using these approaches. So you could exhaust yourself going through this entire collection of techniques and still not be able to evaluate certain limits. Okay, let, let me show you one, for example. Say we have the limit as x approaches 1 of the natural log of x over x minus 1. Notice, as x approaches 1, we get an expression of the form 0 over 0. Natural log of 1 is 0, and then in the denominator, again, as x approaches 1, the denominator is approaching 0. I don't know in this particular case what's going on. This limit, it may or it may not exist. Okay, I can also switch up things a little bit. Say instead of having x approach 1, I have x approaching infinity. Does that make things better? No. Again, we would have the numerator approaching infinity, the denominator approaching infinity, and none of our previous methods apply. 
Like, I can't go ahead, divide by the highest degree of the denominator. There's no conjugate to multiply by. So all our previous methods don't apply. Not to, don't, don't fret though, okay? Don't cry about it. I got a new method for you. Are you ready? It's not my method though. It's the method that we call L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so here's what L'Hopital's rule say, says. Suppose f and g are differentiable and that g prime of x is not equal to zero on some open interval i that contains a, except possibly at a. Suppose that the limit of both f and g as x approaches a is zero, or that the limit of f and g as x approaches a is either positive or negative infinity, which basically means we have an indeterminate form of the type zero over zero or infinity over infinity, then dun, 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 the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x equals the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. And this holds just so long as the limit on the right hand side exists or is infinity or negative infinity, okay? So this is what L'Hopital's rule allows us to do. Basically, as long as you have one of the following two indeterminate forms of the type either zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you can take the derivative of the numerator, divide it by the derivative of the denominator, and evaluate the limit, the limits preserved. Now I want you to notice something. This is not the quotient rule, right? We're taking the derivative of the numerator independently from the derivative of the denominator. I usually tell my class this is the illegal quotient rule. <laughs> this is what you wish the quotient rule was, but it ain't, okay? So we're not doing low D high, high D low over low low. We are just taking derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. That's it. Now a couple things to remember. L'Hopital's rule only applies for those two indeterminate forms, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, and you always need to indicate which indeterminate form you found before applying the rule. Don't apply it if you don't have one of those two indeterminate forms. Good? Okay, let's practice. Let's practice. So here we go. Example, limit as x approaches pi over 2 of 1 minus sine x over cosine x. So first you should try direct substitution. So meaning as x approaches pi over 2, I'm just going to think to myself, let me plug in pi over 2 for x and see what happens. So 1 minus sine of pi over 2 is 1. That's what's going on in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have cosine of pi over 2. That's 0. So notice we have an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0. I'm allowed to do L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to tell the people that's what's happening. So the way I was taught, I write L apostrophe H to indicate that I'm applying L'Hopital's rule. I've seen some instructors, they tell their students to do like an H with a circle. That's cool too. You know, you live your life. You just got to tell everybody, hey, I'm doing L'Hopital's rule right here. This step, that's what's happening. So we still write lim. X goes to pi over 2. And then now let me take the derivative of the numerator. So derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x. Okay, that part's done. Now, let's take the derivative of the denominator. So derivative of cosine x, that's negative sine x. How are we doing? Beautiful. Okay, these negatives cancel out. And then now, let me try direct substitution. Let me try to just plug in pi over 2 for x. So in the numerator, we'll have cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. In the denominator, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Yay! And 0 divided by 1 is just 0. So this limit is 0. How fun, right? Now, L'Hopital's rule, remember, we only use it for indeterminate forms of the type 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. How many indeterminate forms are there? There are seven. So there's quite a few in particular seven. I like to think just like there's seven deadly sins. Okay. He, he, he. Now, don't think that it means the limit does not exist necessarily. It just means further investigation is needed or you need to use other techniques to evaluate it. 
So we know about zero over zero. We know about infinity over infinity. These are like the two biggies. You might have run into two others up until now, believe it or not. Infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form because basically the infinities don't cancel each other out. And you don't know if this one's growing at the same rate as the other one, or maybe it's growing faster, or maybe this one's faster. So sometimes this could approach a number, like a finite number. Sometimes it approaches infinity. Sometimes it approaches negative infinity. I can't determine it. It's indeterminate, <laughs> okay? Another indeterminate form is infinity times zero. Basically, you have one term that's blowing up, one term that's shrinking. Again, they're competing with each other. So I don't know which one's controlling the situation. Is it the blowing up one or the shrinking one? Huh, I don't know. And then three indeterminate powers, which we're also going to investigate in this video. One to the infinity, zero to the zero, and infinity to the zero. Okay. And just to point out some things that are not indeterminate not indeterminate forms like if you have infinity plus infinity we know that goes to infinity negative infinity minus infinity that goes to negative infinity infinity times infinity that goes to infinity even if i play around and i have negative infinity times infinity that goes to negative infinity so those are not indeterminate but Notice nothing's competing. Like I have two infinities, both positive. Two infinities, both negative. Multiplying two things that are both getting large will yield something getting very, very large. Multiplying two things that are large, even if one's negative, means overall everything's getting large in the negative direction. It's this competition here when they're not in agreement that makes it indeterminate, okay? So here's all seven, you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got it? Okay. Now, the first two respond to direct applications of L'Hopital's rule. Let's practice a few more and then we'll work on some of the other indeterminate forms. So let's see here. As x approaches infinity, e to the 3x is going to approach infinity. And then natural log of x also approaches infinity. So we're in a good place. We can go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. We have to tell the people that's what's happening though. So now we've got limit, x goes to infinity. Now don't forget, in the numerator, when we take derivative of e to the 3x, we have to use the chain rule. So we'll multiply by 3, and then we have e to the 3x. And then derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Okay, if I were you, since we have 1 over x in the denominator, let me rewrite this. And just bring the x up to the numerator here. I'm not going to try to evaluate the limit just yet. Let's just clean things up. So limit, x goes to infinity. This is 3x times e to the 3x, right? Okay, so if x is going to infinity, 3x is approaching infinity. e to the 3x is also approaching infinity. Do we have a problem? Evaluating a limit when we have infinity times infinity? No, that's good. That's not an indeterminate form. They're not competing. Both terms are getting very, very large. I'm multiplying them. That means everything's getting very, very large. Okay, everything's positive, positive infinity. Good? Beautiful. Okay, let's look at a few more that... Indicate sometimes you just need to rewrite things carefully and then you can be in business. So we have the limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the negative one over x over x. Now, anytime I'm working with limits, not derivatives and integrals, but limits, and I have a negative exponent, I like to rewrite it in the denominator. It helps my brain evaluate the limit more easily. Watch what I mean. I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. And the numerator I'm going to rewrite as 1 over e to the 1 over x. And then just leave this x down here. He's fine. Okay, so think carefully here. As x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over x is approaching positive infinity. Yes, 
Okay, so if you need to review that infinite limit video, please do so. You have a positive non-zero constant in the numerator. Denominator is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking through positive values. That means this whole expression, 1 over x, is blowing up. That means e raised to the infinity, e raised to something getting very, very large. This is going to infinity. And then 1 divided by something getting very, very large. This whole numerator is going to 0. That's it. It's going to 0. Okay. And then what about this x in the bottom? Well, x is going to 0 from the right. So then this is going to 0. So right now we have an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0. Which means, yes, I can do Le Brittle's rule. Okay. You have to check, though. Now, when I actually go take the derivative, I don't want to work with this form, right? This is going to be painful. I'm going to take the derivative of e to the negative 1 over x. Then I can do the chain rule and all that jazz quite easily. So we've got the limit. x goes to 0 from the right. Derivative of e to the something is e to the something. And then by the chain rule, I need the derivative of negative 1 over x. So negative 1 over x is negative x to the negative first. Taking the derivative, it's going to be positive 1 over x squared. Okay, good. And then the denominator, that's relaxing. Derivative of plain old x is just 1. Okay. So now let me clean this up a wee bit and see if we can evaluate the limit. Limit x goes to 0 from the right. e to the negative 1 over x over x squared. Uh-oh, wait a minute. This is the same thing that we had in the numerator earlier. I know it goes to 0. So this goes to 0. And the denominator goes to 0. I still have an indeterminate form. Now, we could apply L'Hopital's rule again, but I'm already looking and things are spiraling out of control. What do I mean? Am I being overly dramatic? Possibly. But see how originally we had e to the negative 1 over x over x. Now I have e to the negative 1 over x over x squared. Instead of simplifying the expression whose limit we were finding, things have gotten messier. I went from x to x squared. So clearly... Applying L'Hopital's rule while it's written this way is not the way to go. So what you need to do here is abort mission. Sorry, guys. And that happens. That's part of the process, okay? That's part of the process. And you go, what can I do differently? Because I do have an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0. I'm, I'm just so sad that it's not working out for me. Okay. Don't despair. Let's try again. Limit. X goes to 0 from the right. And we're just going to do a little switcheroo. So we've got e to the negative 1 over x over x. We're going to flip the script. We're going to take this, rewrite it. Limit. x goes to 0 from the right. I'm going to put that e to the negative 1 over x in the denominator. <laughs> now it's e to the positive 1 over x. And then that x that's in the denominator now, I'm going to move it to the numerator. Then it becomes 1 over x. Okay. All right, let's see. Has this helped me in any way? Hang tight. As x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over x is going to go to positive infinity. And then down here, 1 over x is going to positive infinity. So e raised to the positive infinity also goes to positive infinity. So I have an indeterminate form of the type infinity over infinity. You can apply L'Hopital's rule for an indeterminate form of this type. So let's hop to it. So now we've got the limit. x goes to 0 from the right. Derivative of 1 over x. This is x to the negative first. So the derivative is going to be negative 1 over x squared. Derivative of the denominator. Derivative of e to the 1 over x is e to the 1 over x times derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared. And then, yay, look, the negative 1 over x squared cancels. Beautiful. And then we have the limit. x goes to 0 from the right. 1 over e to the 1 over x. Did this fix all our problems? It fixed all our limit problems, that's for certain. X goes to 0 from the right. This is going to infinity. 
my whole denominator is going to infinity and I have a constant over infinity. Where's that going, you guys? Top's not changing, bottom's getting really, really big. This is zero. Yay! Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Be like, Professor V, how do I know that I need to flip it that way in order for L'Hopital's rule to work? You know, right off the bat, you probably don't notice. So it's you're just gonna have to try and it doesn't work out. And then you get creative and you think, let me flip things, okay? But here's what you need to pay attention to. If after doing L'Hopital's rule once, you still have an indeterminate form, then you look back at where you started and you go, are things getting better or are they getting worse? Because notice when I compared what I was taking the limit of here, it was messier than what I started with. So that's how I knew I shouldn't keep going. I need to try something different from the get-go, okay? Now, that's not to say that it never happens that you have to do L'Hopital's rule more than once in a row. So I want to show you, yes, yeah, sometimes it is necessary to apply the rule repeatedly. Let's try this example here. X is going to infinity. I have X to the 3 halves plus 5X minus 4 over X times natural log of X. So just if you try substituting in infinity for X right now, the numerator is going to infinity, denominator is going to infinity. So we can definitely apply L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to still write limit, X goes to infinity, and then let's take the derivative of the numerator. So derivative of X to the 3 halves would be 3 halves X to the 1 half plus derivative of 5X is 5, and then derivative of negative 4 is 0. And then in the denominator, we have x times natural log of x. So we have to do the product rule. So derivative of x is 1, leave ln of x alone, plus x times derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So let me clean this up. Let's see if we can evaluate the limit. x goes to infinity, 3 halves, x to the 1 half plus 5 over ln of x. Now this is just plus 1. Okay, so as x goes to infinity, numerator is going to infinity, denominator is going to infinity. Uh-oh, I still have an indeterminate form. But I'm going to look back. This is what I have now. This is what I started with. Things are definitely cleaning up. Like I have less terms in the numerator. This, I already broke up the x and the ln of x. I'm feeling like things are getting better. They're not all the way where I can evaluate the limit, but let me try another round of L'Hopital's rule. You see how this one's not spiraling out of control? It's not messier than what we started with. So let's give it another go. So we have limit, x approaches infinity. Derivative of the numerator, derivative of 3 halves x to the 1 half is going to be 3 fourths x to the negative 1 half. Ooh. And then derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And then all the rest of the stuff is just a bunch of zeros. Okay, dividing by 1 over x is the same as multiplying by x. So then this is the limit. x goes to infinity. 3 fourths x to the negative 1 half times x to the first. So this is the limit. x goes to infinity. 3 fourths x to the 1 half aka square root of x. And then we're good. As x goes to infinity, square root of x goes to infinity. And then multiplying by 3 fourths doesn't do anything, just still gets you to infinity. And we are done. Okay? So here's the thing that I want you to appreciate about indeterminate forms. Like we had infinity over infinity. In this particular case, in this particular case, the numerator was growing faster than the denominator, which is why the limit came out to be infinity. Look at the one we just did a moment ago. Here, we also had indeterminate form infinity over infinity, but this time we got zero, not infinity. That's because the denominator was growing faster than the numerator. But while it's in this form, it's indeterminate. I can't tell, I can't tell. That's why we use L'Hopital's rule. Okay. Now, I want to emphasize that it's always important to first identify the indeterminate form involved. Now that you learned L'Hopital's rule, it's super fun. It's pretty cool. It's straightforward. Students love taking derivatives. They use it a little too much. They, they use it when they're not supposed to. Shame on them. So it's okay, but I just want to show you how it could be problematic. 
Say you look at this one and you're like, I'm just going to do L'Hopital's rule because I don't feel like sitting there and thinking about E's graph and whatnot. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Don't do this. Okay, this is bad. You go, I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule. Limit. X goes to zero. Derivative of the numerator would be E to the X minus E to the negative X. Derivative of the denominator, 2X. You try to plug in 0 for x, and you have e to the 0 minus e to the 0, 0 again in the bottom. You do L'Hopital's rule one more time. You're like, I'm feeling like this is going somewhere good. You get e to the x plus e to the negative x. Derivative of the bottom is 2. Take the limit as x goes to 0. 1 plus 1 over 2. You're like, it's 1. Hooray, I'm done. No, it's not. It's not. Why? Because from the very beginning, we did not have an indeterminate form. We didn't. No. X is going to zero. What do we have going on? E to the zero plus E to the negative zero, which is two. One plus one. X is going to zero in the denominator. Since it's squared, I know it's always positive. So I have a non-zero constant in the top, it's two, it's approaching two, and the denominator is approaching zero from the right. When the denominator is shrinking, 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 and the numerator is approaching some constant that's not zero, the whole thing is blowing up, getting bigger, 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 and I know in the positive direction, since this is positive and this is positive. So my limit actually could have been evaluated from the very beginning, and I should have been able to identify that it was positive infinity. I don't have an indeterminate form that allows me to use L'Hopital's rule. If I go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule anyways when I'm not supposed to, you don't get the right answer. Sometimes you might, but most of the time it won't work out. So be very, very careful. Okay. All right, good. Now we're going to look at some other indeterminate forms right now. First one being zero times infinity, okay? Now, anytime you encounter this indeterminate form, generally we try to just rewrite it as a quotient. So we try to rewrite it as a fraction and make it either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. That way we can go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule, okay? So you're gonna take one of them and flip it to the bottom. Let's look at an example here. So we have the limit as x approaches zero from the right of sine of x times the natural log of sine of x. So let's think here, x is going to zero from the right, so sine of zero, that approaches zero. And then we have ln of sine of x, so I know sine of x is approaching zero, but what's ln approaching? Well, you have to think of the graph of good old natural log. Do you remember it? Oh, you do? If not, I'm drawing it for those of you who might have forgotten. It goes through one zero. Then we have vertical asymptote right here. Boom, boom, boom. This is y equals ln of x. So here we have x approaching zero from the right through values that are larger than zero. So sine of x is approaching zero from the right as well. And then What's the graph of natural log approaching as the argument is approaching zero from the right? Meaning you're here on the graph and you're walking towards zero from the right side. Where's ln of x going? To negative infinity. So right now this limit is of the form zero times negative infinity, which is indeterminate. Doesn't matter if the infinity is positive or negative. Okay. So what to do? I'm going to try to make a fraction out of this guy, meaning either sine of x is going to go in the denominator or ln of sine of x is going to go in the denominator. I'm going to give you a hint. Most of the time, you don't move the ln. You move the other one, the other one, okay? So I'm going to move sine of x in the denominator. But you don't just move it and keep it sine x, right? That wouldn't make sense. This is the limit. x goes to 0 from the right. ln of sine of x over 1 over sine x. That's how you get to move it, right? You move the reciprocal into the denominator. Okay, so then 
1 over sine x, that's cosecant x. Let's rewrite it as such. So limit x goes to 0 from the right, ln of sine x over cosecant x. So we just showed as x approaches 0 from the right, ln of sine of x, that's approaching negative infinity. And then where's cosecant x going? Well, I know that sine of x is going to 0 from the right. So 1 over something shrinking through positive values is going to positive infinity. Can we apply L'Hopital's rule now? Yeah, it, they don't have to both be positive or both be negative. As long as you've got an infinity in the top and bottom, you're good to go. You can use L'Hopital's rule. So here we go. We've got the limit. X goes to 0 from the right. Derivative of the numerator, so derivative of ln something is 1 over the something. And then I have to do the chain rule. So multiplying by derivative of sine x is cosine x. And then let's see. Derivative of cosecant x in the denominator. Derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Good? Okay, so let's see. Let me just clean up. Limit x goes to 0 from the right. Look here, up top, I have cosine x over sine x. That's cotangent x. And then in the denominator, let me just leave it, negative cosecant x, cotangent x, because you see how now I can cancel out this cotangent x? Yes, we love it. And then you guys, having cosecant x in the denominator is the same as sine x in the numerator, so let me move it. There's still that negative sign. So now we have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of negative sine x. And that is just going to be 0. Perfect. Good. Good, good. How was that one? So look, our indeterminate form started as 0 times infinity. Something shrinking to 0 versus something getting very, very large in the negative direction. Which one dominated or won at the end of the day? This guy. All right, let's look at another one for funsies. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent 2x times cosecant 4x. So as x approaches 0, tangent of 0, do you remember graph of tangent? It's this guy. We've got asymptote pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. He's going to 0. He goes through the origin. Cosecant 4x, well, just remember cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine is going to zero, so one over something shrinking is going to infinity. So again, let me see, can I rewrite this as a fraction? I think the easiest thing, hopefully it's kind of jumping out at you, is cosecant. It's like, move me in the denominator and make me sign pronto. So let me rewrite this as the limit, x goes to zero, tangent to x over, now this is sine 4x, right? Okay, so definitely, yeah, tangent's going to zero, sine's going to zero. Let's use L'Hopital's rule. So we've got limit, x goes to zero. Now derivative of tangent something is secant squared something. And then I have to multiply by the two, by the chain rule. So this is two secant squared two x. Derivative of sine four x would be four cosine four x. Don't forget chain rule. And then let's see, as x goes to zero, Secant of 0 is the reciprocal of cosine of 0, which is just 1. And if I square it, it stays 1. Same thing here. Cosine of 4 times 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So I basically have 2 times 1 over 4 times 1, which is 1 half. Okay, cool. Look, so this time <laughs> we had 0 times infinity, and the limit came out to be one half, not even zero, not even infinity, something totally different. So you cannot determine the limit when you have an indeterminate form. All right, now we're gonna look at another indeterminate form, namely infinity minus infinity. Now this one you've dealt with a little bit already, but kind of in a simpler context, like you would have before, the limit as x goes to infinity, maybe square root of x squared plus 1 minus x. Do you remember doing limits like that earlier in the semester? Hopefully. Or quarter. I don't know what system you're on. Um, 
And in this case, you would multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. Hopefully you remember doing all this. And then when you simplify and whatnot, then you are about able to evaluate the limit. Well, sometimes we run into limits of the form infinity minus infinity, but there is no conjugate we can multiply by. So in this case, like the one we have right here, look what's going on. So x goes to infinity x squared over x. Since the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, it's going to infinity. Same thing here. But dang it, there's a minus sign between them. If it was a plus, we would be done. Then I would say infinity plus infinity goes to infinity and we'd all be moving on with our lives. But here we are stuck because there's a minus sign. And there's no conjugate I can multiply by in this case, you see? So what I'm gonna do instead, let's get a common denominator and then just play around with things from there. Hopefully oh, the odds will be in our favor. Okay, so we've got limit. X goes to infinity. I'm going to multiply this first term by x plus 1, top and bottom. So I'm going to have x squared times x plus 1, and then the denominator is going to be x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then we have minus, and then this x squared would get multiplied by x minus 1. Okay, and then there's the common denominator already there. All right, no, don't cancel. No, 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 no. We're going to distribute and clean up. Distribute and clean up. So this is limit. X goes to infinity. In the numerator, let's see, we've got x cubed plus x squared minus x cubed plus x squared. Let me multiply out the denominator here. And then did you notice anything fun? Yes, Professor V, the x cubes cancel. Right on, guys. Okay, so then we've got limit. x goes to infinity. 2x squared over x squared minus 1. Very good. Now from here, x goes to infinity. Numerator's going to infinity. Denominator's going to infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule. We've done limits like this earlier though, before we knew L'Hopital's rule, and we would just divide everybody by the highest power of x in the denominator. So we would divide everybody by x squared. That method still works. Or divide by x squared. Everybody. And then you can get the limit. But let's just practice using L'Hopital's rule a little bit more right now, since we just learned it. So we've got limit x goes to infinity. Derivative of 2x squared is 4x. Derivative of x squared, 2x. I still have infinity over infinity, so let's do L'Hopital's rule one more time. Derivative of the numerator, 4. Derivative of the denominator, 2. So this is just 2. Had we gone the other way, if we divided everybody by x squared, then we would have limit x goes to infinity 2 over 1 minus 1 over x squared. And then we say as x goes to infinity, this goes to 0. And we're just left with 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay. Now, oftentimes students, I'm telling you, they get so obsessed. They love L'Hopital's rule so much. They don't ever want to do the old ways again. And that's going to be a problem if you have to go to Calc 2, especially when you're in like the unit with sequences and series and you can't use L'Hopital's rule unless you have a differentiable function. So I'm just telling you now that you've learned a new rule that's really nice, please don't forget or abandon the old limit techniques that you've learned. You're going to need them if you move on. If Calc 1's the end of the road for you, then I think you'll be okay. But, you know, don't get excessively excited, guys. Okay. Let's do another one. So first, let's verify that we have an indeterminate form even. Remember, this is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Hopefully, you can see that little plus sign of cotangent x minus 1 over x. So let me rewrite cotangent as cosine x over sine x. So limit x goes to 0 from the right. Cosine x over sine x minus 1 over x. Okay. So as x goes to 0 from the right, 
sine of x is going to 0 through positive values. Cosine x, cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 divided by something shrinking that's positive. This whole term, this whole first term, is approaching positive infinity. And then I have minus, again, non-zero constant over something approaching zero from the right, that's going to positive infinity. So yeah, what do we do now? You can't use L'Hopital's rule just yet. L'Hopital's rule is only for zero over zero or infinity over infinity. But let me at least get a common denominator. Maybe that'll help me get the ball rolling. So let's see, we've got limit, x goes to zero from the right. I'll multiply this first term top and bottom by x, and then this one top and bottom by sine x. So we've got x cosine x minus sine x over x sine x. Let's see what's going on. x goes to zero from the right. This is going to go to zero minus zero over zero times zero. Okay, so can we use L'Hopital's rule now? Yes, we can. Okay. Tell the people that's what's happening. Then we have limit. X goes to zero from the right. Derivative of the numerator. I need to do product rule for this guy. So derivative of X is one. Leave cosine X alone. Plus leave X alone. Derivative of cosine X is negative sine X. And then I have minus derivative of sine x here is cosine x. And then denominator, again, I need to do product rule. So derivative of x is 1. Leave sine x alone. Plus, now leave x alone. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. All right, now let's clean up. So notice cosine x, negative cosine x, that cancels. So we have limit. x goes to 0 from the right negative x sine x in the numerator over sine x plus x cosine x in the denominator. So let's see, where are we at? x goes to 0 from the right, 0 times 0, numerator 0. x goes to 0 from the right, that's 0, plus 0 times 1, that's 0. Shall we try L'Hopital's rule again? Are things getting better or worse? Let's give it another go. Let's see. Tell the people. Limit x goes to 0 from the right. Derivative of the numerator. Again, we got to do product rule. Derivative of negative x, negative 1. Leave sine x alone. Now leave negative x alone. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. Denominator's derivative is going to be cosine x plus, let me do product rule quickly, 1 times cosine x minus x sine x. Good? Okay, let's see. Can we use direct substitution now? <laughs> Plugging in 0 for x. This is going to be 0 minus 0 times 1. Okay, so numerator 0. Denominator, that's 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. Plus, that's 1 minus 0 times 0. So the denominator is 2. Oh, hallelujah. Zero divided by something other than zero. Fabulous is zero. We're done, finally. It was only two rounds of L'Hopital's rule, but you know what? Because we had to do so much product rule, it really felt like a lot of work, didn't it? Okay, so we have three indeterminate powers now to look at. Those are last. Zero to the zero, infinity to the zero, and one to the infinity. Now, oh, this, this one confuses students a lot. They go, how can one raised to something not be one? Well, it's not that the base is actually identically equal to one, it's that the base is also approaching one. So these are limits of the form. You have x approaching c, f of x raised to the g of x. So f of x is approaching one, g of x is approaching infinity. It's not like this is identically equal to one. And what happens is we don't know as the base approaches 1 if raising it to something very large is going to result in 1, in infinity, or something else perhaps. Okay, 
So these are our three indeterminate powers. Let's see how to work with them. And we are still going to figure out a way to apply L'Hopital's rule, but we have to be a little clever. So check this out. Here's a famous one. Limit as x goes to infinity of x raised to the one over x. So as x goes to infinity, that base x is going to infinity. And then one over x is approaching zero. So we have an indeterminate form of the type infinity to the zero. When you have one of these three indeterminate powers, here's the move, okay? This is the standard procedure. You're going to let y equal whatever you're taking the limit of, in this case, x to the one over x. Then we bust out a natural log. So that means natural log of y, I'm taking natural log of both sides, equals natural log of x to the one over x. And you might say, Professor V, I don't like this at all. I know, I'm sorry, but it's necessary because now that I have natural log of x to the one over x, I can use my log properties and move one over x to the front and write this as one over x times ln of x, which is ln of x over x. Why am I so excited about that? Because now, if I consider the limit as x goes to infinity of this guy, which is ln of y, that's the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x over x, notice I have numerator going to infinity, denominator going to infinity. What does that mean I can do? I can now use L'Hopital's rule. Oh, perfect, okay. So then I'm gonna take the derivative of the numerator, derivative of ln of x is just one over x. Derivative of the denominator, x is just one. And as x goes to infinity, this is going to zero. Zero divided by one is just zero. So you might say, yay, we're done. Not quite. We just showed that the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of y is zero but I want the limit as x approaches infinity of just y, not ln of y, right? I started with just x to the one over x. So what you can do is take e, raise it to both sides, and we are allowed to pass e inside that limit. So I can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the ln of y. So then now that's the limit x goes to infinity of y, which is e to the zero, which is one, okay? Therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the one over x, which we called y, is one. That was originally what we had. Now, most of the time, I don't make my students show all of this. Once you get a limit, and you know that you added natural log to both sides originally to evaluate it, all you need to do is just take E, raise it to whatever you got, and that's your final answer for the original limit, okay? We'll work through a bunch of these, don't worry. I know you're probably freaked out right now. That's normal. You'll freak out less momentarily. So here we go. Again, please, no panic attacks. I know it looks scary, but you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna be just fine. Limit as x approaches one, two minus x raised to the tangent pi x over two. So as x approaches one, this base is approaching two minus one, that's one. And then tangent to the pi times one over two, tangent of pi over two, remember we talked about tangents graph a moment ago, and it has vertical asymptotes, negative pi over two, pi over two, on the other side, it's looking like this. So whichever side you're coming from, it's either going to infinity or negative infinity. So we have an indeterminate form of the type one raised to the infinity. Okay, so here's standard procedure, ready? You take all of this and you call it y. So let y equal two minus x raised to the tangent pi x over two. Do you remember what the second move is? We take the natural log of both sides. So then ln of y equals ln two minus x raised to the tangent 
pi x over 2. What's the point of taking the natural log? So we can move the exponent in the front. So you can always skip to that too. Tangent of pi x over 2 times ln 2 over x. Then remember, my goal is I need a fraction so I can do L'Hopital's rule. So somebody's going to get flipped to the denominator. Do you remember what I said earlier? You don't usually move the ln. And in this case, with these indeterminate powers, you never move the ln. Move the other guy. Move the other guy. So I'm going to rewrite this now as ln 2 minus x over cotangent pi x over 2. Good? Now let's take the limit. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 1 of ln 2 minus x over cotangent pi x over 2. So let's see. x is going to 1. This is also going to 1. ln of 1 is 0. And then cotangent of pi over 2 is cosine of pi over 2 over sine of pi over 2, 0 over 1, which is also 0. So now we can use L'Hopital's rule. Fabulous. So this equals, tell the people that's what's happening, limit x goes to 1. Derivative of ln 2 minus x is going to be 1 over 2 minus x times derivative of 2 minus x, which is negative 1. And then derivative of cotangent something is negative cosecant squared something. And then by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of pi x over 2. Pi over 2 is just a constant. Pretend it's like derivative of 5x. It's just 5. So this would be pi over 2. Okay. Good. Can we evaluate the limit? Should we clean it up? Maybe we can clean it up. Okay. Limit x goes to 1. Let me write this as negative 1 over 2 minus x over, actually the negatives cancel. Let me not write them at all. 1 over, two, see? Cancel, cancel. Over pi over 2 times cosecant squared pi x over 2. Okay, so as x approaches 1, that's 1. 1 over 1, that's approaching 1. Denominator, let's see, cosecant squared of pi times 1 over 2, pi over 2. Cosecant of pi over 2 is reciprocal of sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Reciprocal of 1 is still 1. Square it, it's still 1. I love it. So we have pi over 2 times 1 in the denominator. So denominator is approaching pi over 2. So we've got 1 over pi over 2, which is... Yes, 2 over pi. Woohoo! Are we done? Should we box it? No. Remember, that means we found that the limit as x approaches 1 of ln of y is 2 over pi. But the original limit was not involving ln. So how do we undo it? We take e raised to whatever we got, which is 2 over pi. So that's like the shortcut way. So just whatever you get from the limit after you've added ln to undo it, you take e and raise it to that value, okay? So then now we can say, let's rewrite it nicely because we probably forgot what the original limit was. The limit as x approaches 1 of 2 minus x raised to the tangent of pi x over 2 is e to the 2 over pi. Ooh, that's a good one. It looks... It looks more intimidating than it was, right? Aren't we fine? Look at you all surviving and thriving after we finish that problem. Okay, so just to summarize, in using this approach where we add in that extra ln, right? So if you end up with the limit of ln of y is infinity, then the limit of the original is e to the infinity, which is just infinity, if you get, I'm talking about like at this step here, at this step here, when you've taken the limit using L'Hopital's rule of ln of the original, right? Okay. If you get negative infinity at that step, then the limit of the original without the ln is going to be e to the negative infinity, which is going to approach zero. 
And then if you get some number like we did k, 2 over pi, 0, then your final limit is just e to the k, whatever it might be. Okay? So let me just summarize now for you. <laughs> the strategies for applying L'Hopital's rule vary depending on the indeterminate form that appears. So if you have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity from the jump, then just go ahead, apply L'Hopital's rule. Yeah? If you have 0 times infinity, you flip one of them. Flip one of them. So you either have infinity over 1 over 0, which is going to go to infinity, or you leave the 0 and you have 1 over infinity. And then you can do L'Hopital's rule. Um, then we did infinity minus infinity. So rewrite, get a common denominator. And then usually from that point, you can use L'Hopital's rule. And then lastly, our indeterminate powers, 0 to the 0, infinity to the 0, 1 to the infinity, you use ln, then L'Hopital's rule, then e raised to whatever you got. Okay? Now, I didn't do too, too many of these indeterminate powers, but I have another video on L'Hopital's rule and indeterminate forms where I do quite a bit more. So if you want to see more examples, I will link that here. It's also in the description, and you should be good to go. <laughs> Just practice carefully and remind yourself what all the indeterminate forms are. There are seven. So seven's like an easy number to remember, right? Seven wonders of the world. There's more, right? There's lots of things. Okay, so you guys leave me in the comments down below other things that are magical about the number seven. Oh, this is this is me going off on a tangent, but how can I not say this? My favorite, my favorite little power is that seven cubed is 343. Like, I'm not into tattoos on myself. I like tattoos, but on myself, no. But um, if I were to, I like this so much, I would consider getting it tattooed. Because look, this is a seven sandwich. Three plus four is seven, three. Like, I already love it. Look at that. And then seven cubed. I mean, whew, that's my favorite. All right, that's it. I'm going off on a tangent now. Enjoy doing your L'Hopital's Rule homework and limits and whatnot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you guys. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye-bye.